Hey folks, welcome to Spooky Appalachia. I'm your host, Jimmy. And I'm your co-host, Jared, from Jerry King TV. Welcome, Jared. Always and glad to be here. Welcome to all y'all listening. So, the these cryptid stories from the different states, people... I know I keep saying this, but man, it's getting eaten up, isn't it? Oh man, it's getting eat up all over the place, man. People I'll be are asking from it on my channel. We're dang. asking what we're gonna do more. Yeah, I, I'm getting comments and people messaging asking when when the next one is, and yeah, well, I'm excited to. When's the next do this? installment? Yeah. Well, that's now, folks. That's right. And it's. It's Hawaiian cryptids? No, I'm just kidding. It's North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, man, I am on the wrong side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, yeah, North Carolina cryptids. Uh, this was the state that got asked for the most. And just so it turns out, me and Donald just did some filming in North Carolina. We went up for about two days and did a couple location videos. We even went to the location for uh, this next one, or our first one up, the Lake Norman Monster, Normie. Yeah, and you know, I had never even uh, heard of this one. I hadn't I either. Didn't, um, I, had, I didn't know this was even a thing in Appalachia. I had heard yeah. of Nessie, you know, the Loch Ness Monster. But I had no earthly idea of, you know, the Norman monster. Hey, I didn't know either, but uh, it's a thing. And uh, there's a lot of sightings, a whole lot of sightings. There's but, an entire website, LakeNormanMonster.com, devoted to it. And he's even written books on it. But, you know, I mean, that I, you know, that just, you know, emphasizes our point even more that you know no matter how much you study no matter who you how many people you talk to there's always history or something about appalachia that's always new to discover yeah i know i keep thinking i've heard of every cryptid in appalachia by now doing this as right. long as i have but you know what i hadn't and that's yeah. that's the fun thing about it i'm finding new stuff like this all the time yeah, and, but, and that just makes it so awesome. Yeah. Well, should I go on and get into this? Absolutely. Let's do it. So, today we're talking about the Lake Norman Monster. Lake Norman was built in the 1960s and is, and is the largest man-made lake in North Carolina. It spans four counties and about 34 miles. Before it became a lake, it was home to, it was originally the home to a group of indigenous people in the area. Later settlers built towns there, cemeteries, churches, and there was even a battlefield there. Some folks think this explains all the unexplained phenomenon that occurs there. One thing I kept hearing about with Lake Norman is it's it's not just this Lake Norman monster that's going on there. It's uh there's paranormal ghost activity, bunch of stuff. People are seeing all kinds of stuff there. Well, one of the most interesting things going on at Lake Norman is as I mentioned earlier, the Lake Norman monster also no known as Normie. Descriptions of the creature vary but most claim that it's a large serpent-like creature over 50 feet long and has a head that resembles a horse. Some say that they've seen scales or even fins. And it's also said that its eyes glow. And this is what a lot of people see in the water is, is glowing eyes or something glowing deep down in the water. Since the area was dammed up, there have been hundreds of sightings, like we mentioned before, and those are documented on the LakeNormanMonster.com site. They have a form that you can fill in and submit your sightings. 
and they've got the book out that I mentioned, and that's got the sightings up till 2012? Yeah, 2012. And since then, there has been a lot more, a lot more sightings. Like this one, I got permission to use a couple. Here's a couple interesting ones I found. On January 15th, 2020, near Cowan's Ford Dam, it was a quiet and peaceful winter morning. You know, one of those mornings where the mist rises out of the lake high into the sky. I stared down into the water and saw, to my shock, the depths of the lake were illuminated with a ghostly white light. I see all sorts of creatures swimming in the glowing depths. Some were beautiful, others ugly, and some were just plain terrifying looking. But the greatest shock came when I stared into the light and realized that I saw a big black circle like a pupil in the middle of the glowing sphere. I then realized this was the glowing eye of a giant monster. Woo -hoo. Man, that, oh man. I mean, that right there was would be something that, to experience that would just make your blood run cold. Oh, yeah. And I don't know, at the same time, it would be fascinating. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, we, we've got more stories. We've got two more interesting ones. And here's our second story. In the late 1970s, when my grandfather was still alive, he used to tell the grandkids about how he was a foreman in the 1930s for a lumber camp that had the job of clearing trees from the valley in the area that is, you know, now Lake Norman. My mom grew up as a cook on the camp, and she always swore that when they flooded the valley, several settlements complete with houses, barns, etc., were just left on the bottom of the lake where it was filled. I didn't think much about it, but my mom said when they started flooding the lake, people started dumping buckets of fish into the lake so that the lake wouldn't be bare of fish. Truly, because I went scuba diving in the lake and looking for these old buildings in hopes of bringing back some old bottles or something neat like that. After consulting some old 1920s maps from the library, we picked a few spots to dive and loaded our equipment and set up camp at the lake. On the third dive, we found a small group of three buildings, one of which was a house, still with the glass in the windows intact, and a collapsed front porch at about 80 feet down. We thought we might get lucky and spotted a big hole in the side of the house and decided to go into the hole. Instead of risking the collapse of the front porch on us, we never made it in actually. We had lights on while in the water and could see nearly perfect even though it was dark. And we saw a huge fish bigger than a scuba diver with a full set of scuba on it was at least eight feet long, three feet wide across the mouth. We hovered in the water for just a good five minutes with our lights on it, not believing what we were seeing. I've never seen a fresh water fish that big. We were both a bit alarmed at what we saw and still talk about it from time to time. But because neither of us had a camera on the trip, we didn't get the all important photo proof. Anyways, as we watched the fish for a good five minutes, the only thing it did was pump its gills and open and shut its mouth slowly. It was like it didn't even see us. To guess the species of fish, I would say it was a catfish, a darn big scary one too. I haven't had the opportunity to dive the Lake Norman again after that. Not that the old house would be standing still, but the fish might be a lot bigger than it was some 20 odd years since. And uh, big thanks to LakeNormanMonster.com for these two stories. And we have a third. So me and Donald went out to Lake Norman. 
uh, to film one of our, I guess, legend tripping videos is what we call them usually. And while we were out there filming with the drone, this couple came up to us, asked what we were doing. We told them what we were filming, that the, there were rumors of a cryptid there. And she said, well, what's it look like? And we told her that it looked kind of like the Loch Ness Monster. You know, just kind of explain what it looked like. And then she had like kind of a shocked look on her face. And she said that she, her husband, and a bunch of their friends had been camping out up there near some docks. They came back from getting something to eat. And there was a big group of people out there staring out at the water. They went to go see what it was that all these people were looking at. And there were these three huge bumps out in the water huge and they, they had like spikes on the back of them she said and everybody was gasping and taking photos of it and they just didn't know what uh what they had seen and then uh me talking about it the next day made her go oh wow that, that might be uh what that was uh i think she guessed that it might have been somewhere around 12 to 15 feet if she had to guess she said so Pretty crazy, and I did send it to LakeNormanMonster.com, but I, I that that was like the cherry on top for that trip. Most definitely. I mean, you know, that's not you know, like we was talking before, you know, we started recording here. You know, to even go to you know film the place is you know amazing for the you know a story and things like that. Mm -hmm. But um. To actually run into somebody, the odds of that, you know, running into somebody with an experience, get, you know, get it firsthand. I mean, yeah, like you said, perfect, man. I mean, that, that yeah. definitely cherry on top. And I found it believable because she had no idea what we were talking about until I right. started describing it, you know? Right. That was really cool. Most definitely. Oh, Yeah. But speaking of, the next story is pretty wild, too. Oh, yeah. This one's pretty crazy. Definitely. This one is The Vampire Beast of Bladenboro. Bladenboro is a small town located in southeastern North Carolina, surrounded by swamps, forests, and things like that. Well, looking at it today, you know, most people wouldn't think that it's, you know, prime location for one of the greatest stirrings of monster sightings in North Carolina history ever. On the night of December 29th, 1953, a woman heard people's next door dog barking and then whimpering. She went out to see what was going on. And that's when she saw it. A large cat-like creature took off and vanished into the darkness. She described it as being a dark colored feline around four feet long. Unfortunately, the dog didn't survive the incident. Oddly enough, no flesh was really taken off the dogs, but their blood had been completely drained. Just a few nights later, on New Year's Eve, the beast struck again killing two dogs on a farm at the edge of town. This time, the dog's skulls were badly damaged, but again, no flesh was eaten. And again, the blood was drained. On January 2nd, a search party was formed to try and track down the creature. Two more dogs were found dead with their blood drained that day. But the search party didn't have much luck. That evening, a local man stepped outside of his house to investigate after hearing some dogs a howling and witnessed the creature. He described it as being about four foot long, brushy, and resembled a bear or a panther. Even, you know, each day, you know, day after day, People started joining in on the search party. Folks began coming from out of town, hearing about it, to join the effort. On January 5th, some tracks was found 
and the group went to investigate the area. But unfortunately, one of the hunting dogs got attacked and drug off into the woods. The vegetation was so thick, there was little they could do to help their poor dog. That evening, there was even more sightings. A man living near the cotton mill went outside after hearing his dogs barking and sounding agitated when he saw what he described as the biggest cat he had ever seen. He estimated it to be three to four feet long, about 20 inches high, and real dark colored. He also noticed it had the face of a cat. As he reached for his shotgun, it vanished into the darkness. Not far away, a woman stepped outside of her home to see what was causing her dogs to act up as well. When she did, she saw what she thought looked like a big old mountain lion. So the creature charged the woman, but broke off its attack and vanished when she let out a big scream. After several days had passed, and even more sightings occurred, on January 14th, a man reportedly hit a large spotty cat with his car killing it. It was said to have weighed somewhere between 75 and 90 pounds. Many believed that this was the beast. Others believed it just to be a bobcat. Others believe the Bradenboro beast is still out there somewhere. Mm -mm. Man, oh man. You no, know, kind of sounds like, I don't know, kind of sounds like a wampus cat, but did those ever, those attacked livestock, didn't they? Yeah, I think they did. Okay, okay. This thing seemed to go after dogs a lot. Yeah, I wonder if it was something about, uh, I don't know, maybe it was uh, the scent of the dog, you know, because the dog and cat naturally are, most of the time, you know, not usually the best of friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if they're not raised around one another. Yeah. But, you know, maybe it could be something like that. Uh, who knows, maybe when it was little or something, you know, a dog was mean to it. Who knows? Yeah. But it's definitely interesting. Oh, definitely. That one was creepy as heck. It definitely Also, was. yeah, it, it drained its blood. The It yeah. drained the blood from the dogs, too, didn't it? Yeah, it said, you know, it didn't uh, didn't try to eat them or anything like that. Yeah. You know, it just drained the blood. That was really strange. Yeah, that's, I guess, how it got the name the Vampire Beast. Yeah guess so definitely strange yeah that one was a weird one i was like we gotta cover that one definitely Speaking a lot of, of big oh yeah i was gonna say there's just a lot of big cat stories around oh yeah there. yeah and and it, it they all have you know their own traits and stuff yeah but when it comes to drain the blood out of them that's why that's I mean, the that first time like, i've heard of that yeah yeah that that's uh, I've only heard of that one other time, and I think that was from uh, Chupacabra. Yeah. And, but as far as Appalachia, that'd be the first. But uh, except for the Appalachian it. Chupacabra. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, who knows? Maybe that would be the first one. Yeah. I heard someone mention an Appalachian chupacabra once. By the way, I don't. I don't remember much about it. I heard it in passing. Oh man, yeah, just funny. I thought, <laughs> kind of is, but then again, hey, it's you never Appalachia. Know. So you never yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, speaking of that, the next one's pretty wild too. Oh yeah, the giant leech of Murphy, North Carolina. There's a spot near Murphy, North Carolina, called the Leech Place. I actually did a video on here on Spooky Appalachia, so if you haven't seen it, be sure and go look that oh, up. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's by the indigenous Cherokee people that live there. There's some very dangerous and strange things can be found. The spot in question is right before the Valley River joins the Hawassi. There's a thin, le uh, thin ledge of rock that runs across the river to form a natural bridge. Below it, 
there's a deep hole where the water disappears into the darkness. A long time ago, along this bridge, a small group of Cherokee men were walking one day and looking into the river below and there was something very strange. There was something very large and red sitting on the rock ledge of the river. It began to move and stretch out and they noticed it looked like a giant leech. It was bright red with white areas running along its body. It laid on the rocks for a while, then slithered down the rocks into the deep dark hole in the water. The men couldn't believe their eyes. Shortly after the water began to bubble and foam like it was boiling. Then a giant water spout shot up out of the water. It would have swept the men plumb away had they not turned and run. There's also many stories of folks who were not so lucky, such as a young man who thought the story was just an old wives' tale and set out alone and was never seen again, or a young mother who went out there fishing and was also never seen again. Most of the stories tell of bodies being found near that spot with their eyes and noses missing. So if you ever go near North Murphy, North Carolina, steer clear of this spot. Man. Man. And that just tells you right there, man. I mean, just plain and simple. Mm -hmm. You know, there's things in the woods and there's things in the water that, you know, there's so many like large bodies of water that connects to smaller bodies that connects to smaller ones, even all the way down to creeks. So things can swim out of these underwater caves. That's never been explored and things. Mm -hmm. Man, there's no telling what. Yeah, what's I know. Out there. You know, there's more of uh, the earth that's been, you know, land that's been explored than the ocean. You know, there's only a certain percent of the ocean that's been explored. So, there's no telling what lays in the depths of that. And then, you know, what could go from there into, you know. A river. Yeah, a river. Then from a river to a lake to a creek and, you know, so on. You just never know. That giant leech did. Oh, yeah. Also, yeah. I keep hearing about all kinds of weird stuff coming out of Murphy, North Carolina for some reason. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why, but I do. Yeah, it seems to be just be popping up everywhere lately, man. Yeah, they've got the uh, they've got a bunch of Bigfoot uh, sightings going on there. I've heard right now, and yep. uh, we've got another cryptid type thing coming up from there here in a bit as well. But first, we'll talk about the siren of the French Broad. The French Broad River is a river that starts off in Transylvania County, North Carolina. It flows into Tennessee up near Knoxville. There's a legend with this river that goes back as far as the 1940s. It's said that a beautiful woman with dark hair will come out to nearby men in their dreams for days until they become completely obsessed with her. Eventually, she begins to lure them to the waters of the river where they finally get to meet her in person. She will appear to them in the water, and when the victim gets close enough, she pulls them into the water and they are never seen again. When looking into this, we were able to find a somewhat recent encounter from back in 2011 where a young man named Gard was camping with his girlfriend near the French Broad River in a very remote location along a bend in the river. He woke up at 3 a.m. one night having to go twinkle. So he goes outside of his tent to do the, his business. And that's when he spots a naked man standing on the side of the river. 
just staring down into the water. Then eventually, the man gets into the river, walking out into the water, and dives in, completely submerged. Guard can't believe what he's seeing. He waits a few minutes, and nothing. Nothing happens. No air bubbles or anything. So frightened, Guard ran back into the tent. And ever since that day, Guard says he's been having reoccurring nightmares about where he himself is walking into the water of the very same river and seeing not his reflection, but the silhouette of a woman. And he believes this to be the siren of the French Broad. Man. Man, I'm scared to go to North Carolina again now. <laughs> yeah, no joke. All this stuff. I mean, golly, send me a postcard. You know, let me know yeah. how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's just downright terrifying. Now, yeah, I saw I mean, a couple of stories where people were hiking past that river or along the river, and uh, this, you know, same sort of stuff. They go missing or. They see somebody get into the water and they don't come back out. Good Lord. Yeah. Man, from the land of the, oh, to the water, you know, it's nowhere safe in North Carolina. <laughs> uh, it does definitely just, sound like there's, you know, it's just, there's something about North Carolina that's just packed with cryptids. And yeah. Crazy, you know, just wild, off the wild things. You hear about West Virginia all the time when it comes to cryptids, but I found a ton of stuff from North Carolina when I looked into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, North Carolina, is, I mean, it's 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 real rich in history just in general. But when yeah. you start getting into the cryptid and spooky stuff, you know, kind of side of it, oh, man, that's when the doors really opens up to a new world. Yeah. Which for us is gold yeah <laughs> <laughs> man yeah but hey, i'm spooked from that last one still yeah. man Ooh. i mean golly i mean I think I, we'll, I, we'll have dreams about her tonight i hope not if i wake up i'll tell her to leave me alone i gotta work in the morning <laughs> <laughs> leave me alone lady i ain't got time <laughs> uh, gotta work at 6 a.m go away yeah, go away kid you bite of me yeah <laughs> You're going to scram. But yeah, like I said, there's definitely some wild, you know, history with it. And speaking of that, it's kind of oh, like this the, next, the next story here is about the Moon Eyed people. If you ever visit Cherokee County Historical Museum in Murphy, North Carolina, you'll find tons of Cherokee artifacts, tools, and dolls. If you head to the museum's basement, you'll notice a strange statue inside of a glass box. Two strange conjoined figures stand about three feet tall with an kind of like alien looking faces. It'll stare back at you through the glass. Unearthed sometime in the 1940s, the statue of apparently a local legend of the Moon Eyed people. Most believe that the Cherokee moved into the area around Murphy, North Carolina, somewhere around 110 to 1200 AD. According to local Cherokee folklore, there was already a race of people living in a village in the area where the Hawassi and the Valley Rivers converge. These people were short, with very pale white skin and blue eyes. Their eyes were so blue that they couldn't see during the day. They only come out at night. And the Cherokee called them the Moon-Eyed People. Over the border in Georgia, Fort Mountain, there's an 850-foot stone wall that the state park there is now named after. According to Cherokee legend, this wall was built by the Moon-Eyed people. Believed that the wall was built between 400 and 500 A.D. Where did the Moon-Eyed people go? It's said that the Cherokee and Moon-Eyed people went to war. And the moon-eyed people eventually lost. The Cherokee attacked during a full moon when the moon-eyed people 
were at a disadvantage due to their light sensitivity. After this, the moon-eyed people ended up living underground. When we first heard about this story, we found it fascinating. A lot of people say that the moon-eyed people are aliens. The description does kind of seem very similar, you know, to those given by many people in alien encounters. And looking at the statue, who really wouldn't give that a second thought? One similar encounter was a Kelly Hawkinsville encounter in 1955. Reports described these creatures as silvery skinned and between two and four feet tall. However, these creatures had large yellow eyes and sensitivity to light. One popular theory is that the moon-eyed people were Welsh settlers that landed in Alabama around 1170 and eventually settled in the Murphy area where they were seen by the Cherokee. They had never seen people with pale skin, blonde hair, and blue eyes, so it makes sense that they may have thought these people were very strange looking. What do you think these moon eyed people really were? Were they well settlers? Aliens? Maybe t some type of cryptid? Who knows? God, me, man. I mean, I think that they were Jared King ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the shortness, you know, that, that kind of, you know, fits in. Well, I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> so you weren't going to put that out there, huh? Yeah. Uh, Which, I'm almost six foot tall, roughly. Really? To, yeah, so what are you, like six foot nine, nine, nine? No. <laughs> I'm six two. No, I'm, I think I'm roughly like uh, maybe five, ten, five, eleven. Oh, okay. Yeah, when you said you were six feet tall, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like said, uh, I'm roughly, like I said, around 5'10", 5'11". I wonder how tall, did they say how tall they thought these moon-eyed people, no? No, they didn't really say, they just said real short. Yeah, Donald actually did a video uh, down there in Murphy on the moon-eyed people in person. Oh, that's, a, that's another one we've, we've done. Yeah. He did. So that's cool. Be sure and check that one out, too. Definitely. And there's not only that, folks. Like I said, there's a ton of other amazing videos here on Spooky Appalachia. Uh, be sure to head over. Check out the uh, the playlist and stuff. Go through the videos. You know, cipher through them. See what, you know, see what you can find. There's years and years worth of content. Yeah. And Jared's channel, too. Jared King TV. Be sure to head over there and subscribe if you hadn't, too. I'm yeah, on there a I'll lot as well. Yep, sure is. Jerry King TV is what I, you know, what I've been telling everybody, and most people already knows it. Uh, Spooky Appalachian Jerry King TV is like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> you know, yeah, really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what you keep saying. Yeah, and but I mean, you know, it really is true. Yeah, you know, I mean, like I said, you'll, uh, uh, you'll, you know, Jimmy's on my channel, you know, a lot. I'm over here a lot and everything. So, hey, go with what works. You know, people. Yeah, love it. yeah, people love it. So. It's pretty crazy. I go to all these conventions in these places, and they're all, uh, they're all like, I've heard of you. I listen to you. I'm like, whoa, really? Yeah, you know, and that, you know, that makes it all worth doing a lot, you know? Yeah, that, like, melts my heart when I hear that. It really does. And then, you know? I don't know, just, like, I don't think about it a lot either. It's just like, oh, yeah, I got a YouTube channel with over 5,000 subscribers. Right. You yeah, know, it's not something wow. that's in my mind all that much. And then I get reminded of it. <laughs> right. And then it's you like, know, oh, hey. <laughs> uh, I'm at the grocery store. You're, you're spooky Appalachia. I'm like, oh, yeah. 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 I totally is. am. It's pretty funny. Oh, yeah. That's like me. You know, when I've got a lot of comments. It's like, uh, who does the narration for your channel? <laughs> uh,. Uh, spooky be... Appalachia, that yeah, guy, Appalachia. the co-host on Spooky <laughs> Appalachia does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's him. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. 
but yeah, yeah these, we have a blast yeah we totally do we i mean it sounds like you guys are enjoying the heck out of it i mean we're not trying to do it for fame or glory or anything we just no, like we it because it's it. fun it's fun Definitely. we get yeah, excited yeah. about doing it yeah and 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 you folks enjoying it is so much and everybody smashing the like button subscribing sharing out telling everybody man that just you know it, that, we just i mean that's just so amazing yeah it is man but yeah these these north carolina cryptid stories woo, man spooky i'm telling you man i mean i know i mean i i'm from born and raised you know tennessee mountains and we got some mighty spooky stories here but man north carolina just blows us out of the water <laughs> <laughs> hey maybe we can do tennessee next hey that'd be neat well what would you guys like to see next let us know in the comments yeah let us know we love you, I, you folks yeah yeah we do we do we do we do and i guess that about wraps it up for now all what right do you think? Uh, yeah definitely folks be sure to subscribe i know a lot of folks uh think that it does cost no it only costs to become a channel member of patreon yeah but no hitting the subscribe button that's absolutely free that just lets you know that you know when there's a new video up so be sure to hit you know the subscribe button turn on all notifications hit the like button share out you know you're just you know tell folks about us you know yeah that's out it definitely does. I, I don't know. I guess I, I've heard people say that word of mouth has gotten me out a lot. And oh, that's yeah, how yeah. they heard about me. Yeah. So that definitely does help. And uh, the more subscribers they have, the more places I'm likely to be able to get into for those yeah. legend tripping videos that y'all like so much. So absolutely keep telling that's people right. to subscribe i mean if i'm at like 10k some place is gonna be like get your butt in here yeah you know? <laughs> Come on, <let's> go. <laughs> yeah but yeah like i said folks uh the more you subscribe the better the content you know can locations can be so be sure and smash that subscribe button well thank you jared and uh I guess we'll catch you in the next one. Everybody take care. God bless and have a good. Good night, folks. And uh, stay spooky. Yes. Stay spooky.